What we're going to talk about now is taking this whole concept of posting on forums and turbocharging it, causing it to just avalanche and compound. Because if one person can do this and make money at it, five people can make even more money. I do recommend that you go out there and post for yourself first. That way you learn the process and you get a little bit more familiar with the niche. And believe it or not, you'll also be able to see very quickly how that this does, in fact, generate a good bit of traffic. I get a lot of traffic from this very technique. After that, then you want to go out and have other people do it for you. Because if one person can make money at it, five people can make five times as much money. Because you'll get five times as much traffic. You want to create and register the users yourself. You own the passwords. You own the user. You own everything. Then you're going to go and post a project on elance.com on rentacoder.com, on guru.com, or you can use ifreelance.com, any one of those kind of sites that you're familiar with. All it is, if you haven't ever used these freelance sites, as you go there and you post a project, people bid on the project, they tell you how much they'll charge to do it, then you pick somebody to do it for you, they do the job, and you pay them. That's it. It's very simple. It's also very competitive so you can get things done there for, I mean, pennies on the dollar in a lot of cases. Again, point the user accounts that you create to an email that you set up. It is normal to have five or six different accounts on one forum. Eventually, you're going to have different people posting there for you. Each one of those accounts needs to have a different email address. So you can set up a Gmail or Hotmail account or something. Uh, keep track of all of this stuff in Excel so that you know which account is on which forum and what email address is being used. You can reuse the email addresses on different forums, but you'll need to have, you know, if you've got five people on the same forum, they'll each need a unique email address. But you're going to have these people posting 20 posts a day, each one. If you got five people eventually doing that, then you're getting 100 posts a day. And by the way, when you set the account up, pick something that's, you know, like Guitar Guru or something. Not something that just is very generic, John 382 or something like that. When you post these jobs, list your requirements very, very emphatically. Like there's no question. Let them know specifically what you want them to do. I want you to use a username and password that I'll provide and post 20 posts per day for 10 days with three to 500 characters per post. And I'll give you those details again later on uh, exactly what you want to ask them for. Uh, let them know to try very hard to not have a bunch of spelling and grammatical errors. You don't want the people that are working for you to seem like a bunch of idiots. Now, as far as the requirements themselves, English should be the first language if you're appealing to an English audience, primarily English. This does not mean that any other language, you know, that the people are stupid or anything like that. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that we're able to detect when someone, you know, is even in typing, okay, their grammar. We can tell if English was not their first language. And subconsciously, we just don't take them as seriously. We expect people to speak in our language. Every culture does this. So if you were, for example, marketing in Japan, you would go and you would find somebody who was fluent in Japanese and have them do the posting, okay? Same kind of thing. Um, make sure that they're going to be available. I can't tell you how many times people, you know, they, they, bid on, they bid on a job, you hire them, you don't hear from them for a couple of days, or they work on it for one day, and then you don't hear from them for a few more days, and then they work on it kind of sporadically. Let them know, look, I'm hiring you to post 20 posts a day for 10 days, 10 consecutive days, and I want you to be able to prove to me that you did every single day, okay? Um, 
familiarity with the niche. You don't want to go out and find somebody who's got to do a whole bunch of research before they can even, you know, uh, associate with these people. So let them know what the niche is in your posting and say, I want you to already be familiar with it and show me that you're familiar with it when you bid. Show me an article that you've already written or show me, uh, you know, some, maybe you've got a website or something. Show me something that shows me that proves that you're already familiar with this niche. And then we want a total of 200 posts, 20 posts per day for 10 days. It does not have to be exactly 20, but you want an average. Maybe today they post 10 posts and tomorrow they post 30, but you want an average of 20 per day. 300 to 500 characters per post. Again, that's an average. You do not want these people looking like they're a robot or that they're some kind of automatic posting thing. It does not have to be exact. Give them an approximation. And just make sure they stick with that. And also, you want to make sure that they, you know, in the requirements say, let me back up here for a second. In the requirements, in addition to this, put, you need to, at the end of the day, send me links to all of your posts so that you can just check up on them, make sure they're doing okay, make sure they don't have, you know, gross grammatical errors and that they're doing what you're paying them to do. Another thing you might want to mention to them is if they get in a... It's really good if you can get them to post something very controversial, right? The Ford and Chevy kind of stuff, Gibson and Fender with guitars. People love that controversy, and they've usually got a loyalty. I know my wife, if you start talking to her about uh, you know, Ford, she will just, the hair on her neck stands up, and, you know, I mean, she gets really into it. Me, I'm not so much, uh, that's not such a big deal to me, but for her it is. Well, a lot of people are like that in different niches, and they've got an opinion, and if you raise a controversial question like that, you could it could be something so simple as going to a forum and say, you know, hey, I'm thinking about getting a new guitar. Uh, which is better, Gibson or Fender? All of a sudden, not only Gibson and Fender players, but you're going to have people from Ibanez, Yamaha, Washburn, all kinds of people are going to be posting their preferences. That being the case, what they can do is, uh, maybe they ask a question like that and it's controversial. Well, then they should just wait, come back the next day, see how many posts are there, and then make another post. You want people, uh, with something controversial, you can build such an enormous thread that you just kind of sprinkle posts every you know six or seven replies. And somebody comes there, they did a search on Google, they come to the site, they come to the forum, read the thread, and they're starting to go down and read things. And like every six or seven posts, they're seeing you, you know, you, well, your user with your signature and linking to your site. I mean, the exposure is crazy, and they're going to click on it. I think we'll go ahead and stop this video here, and in the next one, we're going to look at techniques, tips, and tracking.